Hello again, Charlotte here. Right, today we're going to just have a little look at creating a nice uh, flat kind of sea, ocean scene underneath this sort of dawn sky. Now this uh, sky was done in one of the soft palette knife cloud videos and just using that little bit of palette knife to create the interest, the texture, that bit of movement in the sky just makes it really, really interesting. So we're going to match that a little bit with the, the sea that's underneath and bringing some of those morning or evening colours down into the water. Now the first thing, of course, is to think about the, the layering that you're doing with acrylic and always thinking about working from the back forwards. So of course the sky is first because it's furthest away and the green tape here is going to create a lovely crisp horizon line for the water which of course is in front of the sky but first of all putting the beach down is really important because the water is coming over the top of the beach so I want to make sure we've got a little line of sand there and of course you can make as much sand or as little as you want I'm just going to show how I would create a sandy edge and we want it to be matching into these colours and thinking about, well, if the beach is quite pale sand, then maybe the colours of the sand are actually going to be a little bit more pinky because they're reflecting this kind of light. So as always, I'm going to use the, the four primary colours, the three primary colours and the whites that we normally have in our class. And I'm going to start by creating a little bit of a a peach colour for the sand, so a bit of red, a bit of yellow to create our, our nice base, adding lots of white in on the side, maybe having a little bit of extra red in there so it's a nice pinky tone and then remember always the context of colour so having it directly on the canvas always looks different to when it's on the palette. Okay, so I'm just building in some sand edge and I've kept it very similar to the colours of the sky so there's going to be a nice mirroring there and maybe just adding a little bit more red in tiny bit of blue. We'll be very careful with the blue, you know how strong that pigment can be. And just mixing in a little bit of the blue into our peach tone so we've got a nice purpley grey colour. I'm going to have that. It looks very dark at the moment but this is going to create the the shaded edge where the foam is coming onto the the beach and mixing that in with the paint directly underneath. Because it's still wet we're getting that lovely soft blend so we actually get a gorgeous transition of colours there. It's exactly the same way as we did the sky, having the, you know, the, the layer of wet paint underneath them when you add any colours in over the top, you can get a gorgeous smooth blend like that. Absolutely lovely. So we've got a nice transition of colour there for the beach and it also reflects quite a lot of what's going on in the top. Now I'm going to start by putting blue onto the, the area for the water, even though it's going to have quite a lot of of light colours in there and I am going to use the same brush that I've, I've used for the beach because the the blue paint is a this phthalo blue is a very very strong colour and now remember when you're using the tape the masking tape to create your edge always start with your paint a little bit lower than the taped edge because you don't want to be forcing the paint underneath there. So just to work out, first of all, how thick the paint is on your brush and then just stroke down over the edge of the tape which helps to create a little bit of a seal there. So just going over the edge of the tape and then I can fill it in a little bit more confidently Right, now that's, of course, because it's pure blue, even with the tiny bit of paint that was in my brush, it looks very, very strong, a blue colour, and we would not usually be wanting to put a pure colour on there, but this is going to help to create a little bit of, I'm just adding a bit of white in there now, I'm going to create a slightly moisturising layer 
for adding in some palette knife work over the top. Now, if you were just doing a nice summer day blue water scene, you can see how just having the horizontal stripes, mixing a little bit of white into the blue, instantly you're creating that sense of the, the plane of the water. Those horizontal lines start to become very reminiscent of, of waves, very soft rippling. So there's a gorgeous effect there. Now I'm going to add a little bit more white to the bottom edge. And notice how I'm not coming all the way down with the blue to the edge of the sand. I'm going to add more white on here. So covering up this whole area of the water, where the water is going to be with the brush. And that in itself just can, can create a beautiful, smooth area of water. So if you're looking for creating a, a lake or a very still still water, I mean we could actually just leave it at that couldn't we? It, the colours don't quite reflect what's happening in the sky but that shows you just a very simple way to get a gorgeous blend starting with the dark blue at the back adding just a little bit of white and keeping going with the white right to the front with your horizontal stripes. The horizontal stripes are really important because of the plane of the water. It's very flat to the earth. And even when you've got a few little ripples in it, it's, it definitely looks like they're quite horizontal stripes from a distance. So being able to recreate that, suddenly we've got this gorgeous body of, of water, very still, very calm. So that itself, you could just leave it at that. <laughs> leave it at that, have a summery sky, Beautiful water done in five minutes. But we're going to just take it a little bit further and use some palette knife over the top to uh, just emulate a little bit of the texture that's been used in the top part of the painting and also to create a little bit more interest, push the painting slightly further and try some new techniques out. Now what I'm going to do straight away, I'm using this uh, middle shape of a uh, middle size, I should say, of palette knife. All of the materials I'm using are listed with the YouTube video. And I'm thinking a little bit about the color mixing, of course. Now I've got this layer of blue on there. Anything that gets added to that, because it's wet, of course it's going to, to mix in. So we're being a little bit mindful of not wanting to create too much gray in the water. But the, the colors that are in the sky, I definitely want to have them coming across the water. Now the first thing I'm going to do, actually just take some pure red onto the palette knife and just starting from one side, and I'm going to use the very lightly textured, the light pressure of palette knife. So just bringing that pure red across, pressing very, very lightly, just letting the palette knife glide over the top. Now you can see where it's been much thinner. It's mixed with the blue straight away to create a very, very deep purple. Now this is not going to stay with those very strong dots, but I just wanted to add in the red tones from the sky. And here I'm gonna add a little bit of white in there to create some pink, and just a touch of yellow, just to warm it up. There we go, so I've got that lovely, warm, peachy, orangey tone. And again, just using very light pressure, just against the back, just adding in, because I'm just pressing very lightly, the palette knife is connecting with the raised area of paint that's already there. Now again, we're not going to leave it like that because although those dots can look quite exciting, um, they're also creating a texture that's on the water that I don't want to have with the, the finished painting, but this is a great way to start getting the colors that I want. Now, if you've never used palette knife before, there's a little video that I've done which can help to explain the different pressures involved and really it's that's what the key is. I'm just adding more white now into as we're getting a little bit further away from the sky and maybe doing some some light coming down through here and just taking what's on the what's on the palette all of these colors mix in beautifully together 
and they're just all scraping up little bits here and there and they're reflecting the, the sky. Now at that stage it looks like a, a real mess, you know, but we're, it's the layering, it's the building up, it's the understanding where this is going. Now you can take a larger palette knife or you can use exactly the same one and what I'm going to do now is just to press quite hard with the palette knife to get a very very different blend, different effect. So the, by pressing hard I'm going to smush all those colours in. Now the key here is making sure that you can keep as straight as possible. You can see I've got a little bit of wobble happening there coming from the, just the bend of the canvas and having the, the canvas upright. Now the, the line that you can create with the palette knife immediately explains what's happening with the surface of the water. So if there's a lot of variation, it means that the sky, sky, the sea is going to be a little bit more choppy looking. If you scrape off too much of the paint, if you're pressing too hard and you scrape off the paint, then you can just reapply, go back over. Now you see how, as I've been wobbling slightly with the palette knife, can you see how that immediately explains to our eye, oh, there must be some curve, curve in the surface there must be some sort of undulation happening in the water. Now I'm going to just keep going over. If I was using a larger palette knife, I'd be able to cover, of course, a, a bigger area, but you might find that you have a little bit more control with this. Now by blending those colors into the water, we've still got the, uh, the blue coming through underneath and we've still got that blend happening and just knowing about how the colors are going to mix is very important. Now, as I'm going back and forth, I might just start to change the pressure slightly to, when you see lines happening like this, it's just because the heel or the toe of your palette knife is pressing into the painting a little bit, and it doesn't matter at all for water because you want to have some lines which are explaining the, the undulations and the ripples in the water. But if you want to have very, very smooth areas here, you'll just become aware of the pressure that you need and maybe you're not quite holding the palette knife flat, which is creating these, these lines. Now that is, especially in this front part, is getting some lovely reflection of the, the sky into the water. And we're also getting some nice lines which are showing the, the waves. That might be happening that's a little bit dark over there so i'm just going to scrape in just acrylic is such a great medium to use for being able to alter the the look very very quickly and being able to describe what's happening all right now what i want to do here is just add a little bit more of that peach tone coming through the center so we've got uh, the mix of all these lovely purples and and mauve tones coming into the blue to get that really soft colour so it doesn't look quite so summery anymore. And there are just a few little areas at the sides that I left initially just to see what was going to happen with the, the blue tone remaining. And I think it needs to have a little bit of colour over it. So I'm going to take one of these lighter tones, adding just a little bit more yellow in there because I think the, the warm colour works really well. And remembering, of course, so I have to take into account the fact that I'm already mixing it with the colours that are there. And by keeping the, the palette really simple, you're, uh, you're actually making it much easier for yourself because you're not going to be adding in different blues which are going to really, really jar with what's happening there. It's all going to tone together very, very nicely. So adding in a little bit of light. Now you might actually find that that these little spots on your painting, that might be just exactly what you want, having the, the light just speckled across the water. I'm just going to press in a little bit just to blend that and vary the texture by varying my pressure. So sometimes it's really, I'm pressing really hard, I'm perhaps scraping off some of the, the bright light and then other times I'm pressing less hard so we're getting a little bit of texture coming through. 
Now just be aware as well of where the bottom of the tape is. So you want to make sure that you're getting a nice crisp edge with your horizon line. Now I think that has made a big difference just to lighten up the, the back section of water. Now of course you can just keep going over this in nice gentle sweeping movements getting a little bit more of the pink through there and if you find that you're you're mixing it just too much and it ends up looking a little bit muddy then you can just I mean acrylic is so amazing you just wait till it's dried or dry it with a hairdryer and just just paint over just paint over it start one of the processes again at the point where you think that maybe you started to go a little bit too heavy-handed or you scraped off quite a lot of the paint so adding all these and if you get a few more little pops of yellow in there a little bit of brightness that's just fine just be a little bit careful with the yellow and the red and the blue mixing together that you of course eventually you will get brown and you don't want to have too much brown coming through your water again i'm just repeating the process that i had before by doing the, the slightly dotty texture at the outset and then pressing quite hard, bringing some of that lightness through. You see, when there's quite a lot of yellow in it, you will get some mixes of green, which you might not want, but that could also just indicate a really nice shallow area of the water as well. And we're going to put some foam over the top so this is all just building up the base of those variations of colour. Now we're starting to get, you see that lovely layering and through the centre, that sense of the almost like the misty, misty morning water with sun coming across it right through the centres, the centre area there, just with those very gentle left to right stripes and motions okay and a little bit more just at the back there be very therapeutic doing this just going back and forth and you just keep you can keep on layering keep on layering so that's got a lovely shine to it hasn't it really nice flat looking surface and i just want to now create some foam across the front and i'm going to do that just with the same palette knife picking up from my palette more of the, the pure white because of course the paint is still wet on the, the ocean painting here. So I know that any of the white is going to mix in very quickly and, and it will no longer be that pure tone. So I'm going to start just with some little curly motions as if the foam is actually curling onto the sand. Now you might not want it to look this this rough in that case you can do some little smushes like that so coming along here you'll find that you have one way that you can hold the palette knife more easily i sometimes vary the angle that i'm using it but always i tend to come back to doing it this way okay so i'm i'm just pushing the white in and literally creating little squiggles and wiggles in it, which look a bit like the foam. And you can see that, so you're getting a bit of motion there, but you can see how it's also, it's mixing in with all the colors that are on my knife and the colors from my palette. So it doesn't have that really, really bright intensity of white. It's got that much softer sort of morning glow color. But we're now getting that sense of it Know, breaking against the, the sand and maybe this is this is the wet area of sand where the the water's just receded from that the tides coming gently in and now I'm going to add in a few little lines of the the, the white foam just using the point point of the palette knife if you're not getting enough on there scrape up a good a good chunk and then what I would say apply it sideways like this very delicately 
try and keep a relatively straight line and you can just drag it down so you're getting the breaking of waves just and remember if you're doing lines going back through the water towards your horizon line remember that your lines of waves need to get closer together as they recede there you need to think about the scale of course now just a few more of those and you see how that is now with that soft transition of colors all the way through the water there and then a few additional lines just following some of the stripes that I've created just little extra breaking waves just here and there I don't think I need too many of those but you can add in as many as you want or you can start using some of the the pinky tones that you've still got on your palette because they would also of course they tie in tie in tie in I've been looking at the water for too long they tie in perfectly with the the colors that you've got in your picture and also just perhaps they help to bring that sense of the sun the morning sun just reflecting against the white of the wave crests and creating a little bit of additional pink so that is now I mean, it's a very very simple way to create something very effective i'm just adding a little bit of the again the peachy tone just to the tops of some of this foam just to remove a little bit of that blue that's showing through and also it will help to give a bit of sculpture to the the foam and then just you know, whatever you've got on your palette just use it up with those colors a bit more white through there now one thing i'm going to do before i, I take the tape off and have a little look perhaps let's just have a little bit of pink there one important thing to do is just to remember to vary some of the sizes and shapes that you're doing in your wave so you don't create a really rigid pattern because the eye loves a pattern so if you create you know, an exactly symmetrical series of lines then the you know our eye is going to pick that out and, and be thinking well what's going on with this pattern and it shouldn't be too patterned because it's a it's a natural scene and there wouldn't be that much sort of order in it now of course you can you can keep going over with light in the foam adding more white i'm just going to add a touch of additional shadow underneath the the foam there and i'm going to do that with a brush actually just to give myself a little bit more control now you can use whatever size brush you want i've just got a a smallish flat brush and going from my palette here just adding a little bit of blue into any of those pinky tones so the blue of course creates a much darker version now you don't want to be doing an outline underneath here just thinking about some areas where I'm just using the brush just pushing up underneath some areas and you see how straight away that starts to create a sense of of 3d and actually seeing the the shadow as some of these thicker bits of foam would be rising up just creating a little bit of shadow on the sand but you want to think about just doing it on one side of some of your your little lumps and changes of, of direction okay and that can just add in a little bit more realism in a very very loose soft painting but just creates a, a wonderful impression of, of water and of course if you do lines of foam that you're not particularly happy with you can either smush those in with the palette knife or you can wait till it's dry and just go over with a little bit more of your your blue variation but I think I'm probably going to to leave it at that actually and, and even just adding in those those little areas of shadow that's made a made a huge difference just to create a bit of extra pop with the way that that foam is now sort of crashing in onto the, the water. And the most exciting part at this stage is taking off the tape. And always make sure, I can just get the edge of the tape here, 
especially when the painting is wet, you can take the tape off when it's dry or when it's wet if you, if you know that you've finished with it, that you're pulling it uh, away from the painting but also down over the wet paint. All right, we've just got a little bit of slip here with my enthusiasm. I don't want to be pulling the painting into my face. There we go. Fantastic, look at that really, really, really crisp horizon line. Now you can see that there's just a little bit of palette knife texture at the back there. So if you, if you get that, and I think that probably should have been really, really smooth, because that little extra bit of texture, it draws the eye and I don't necessarily want that. So that's an area where you just need to really make sure that you're absolutely pressing that in with, with the palette knife. If you find that you've got some areas like that, you can just try and smooth them with your finger. You can always pop the tape back over and just to clean that up, just a little bit of very gentle smudging in with my finger and that just creates a little bit more be very careful not to go over that lovely crisp edge though just a little bit more variation and perhaps I'll just bring some of those marks down through the center okay so you see how easy that was to put that together we've got this textured edge at the front which is mirroring what's happening up here we've brought together some of the colors so now we've still definitely got the sense of, of the water there but now with a few more of those, those light tones reflecting the sky, and of course you can make the tones across the water as bright as you want, so you're really, really hiding a lot of the blue. You can add in far more sparkle in, in pure white if you wanted to later on, but that, that should give you a really good idea of how to make some additional changes to the water with some very easy palette knife techniques. Okay, so now it's your turn. Have some fun!